what are the what are the characteristics of the people that you want to buy from? And I think they're, they're, this is a lot easier because it's basically the inverse of everything we've just talked about. And we look at what again what buyers tell us are the, the, the most important characteristics or very important characteristics. Sixty-five percent up there at the top say that knowledge and expertise is is very very important. And that's why again talking to you here today is a great. Because that's what we want to do, is to share that knowledge and expertise. Not to do all these sort of things, not to sell. To share the knowledge and expertise, have conversations about that. You know, isn't it interesting? Isn't, isn't, isn't it? Because this is, we're all in the people business, I guess. And, you know, manners and personality and honesty. Mm -hmm. you know, we're all so busy now, you think we'd lost this dimension to, to life. But we want to deal with people that we like. We want to deal with people who show us manners and respect. I've pers got personality on you. And, and the manners one is interesting, because when you mention manners, what comes to your mind when you mention manners? What's, what's, how would, what, what's the first word that would come to your mind when you mention manners? Uh, polite. Polite. What would come to your mind when you mention manners? First uh, word that comes to your mind when I say he's mannerly or she's mannerly? Uh, well brought up. Well brought up. Brought up. <laughs> What comes to your mind when I mention that as the Congenial. word? Congenial. Congenial. Okay. Okay. Anything else come to mind when you mention manners? Respect. Courtesy. Respect, courtesy. Anything else? Listener. Listener. And all these things are all calculations that are going on in what is... And remember again, because this is professional buyers in multinational and other large companies in Ireland. This is... This is People who are trained to make economic buying decisions to buy the rest, the, the best solution for replacing our, our, our factory equipment, or, and yet these things have a major bearing to play. Away from the spreadsheets and the return on investment analysis and the, uh, all this stuff, I think these things are still hugely important. Uh, how do you weigh on these? Do you think manners, personality, and honesty? Uh -huh. How do you weigh on that soft stuff? Even even our hiring methodology and interview and meeting people for the first time. Yeah. Those three will be yeah. very much to the fore as yeah. much as the expertise. Yeah. 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 We also are training. We train at the college and stuff by presenting our work. Yeah. And the presentation of it is what we get graded on really in yeah. And so we have to, we have to be trained to be quite well. I think the first one there, knowledge and expertise, is actually the two quite different things. I think we're very good at the expertise, but I don't think we're all necessarily very good at knowledge at knowing what it is and where it is. I'd like to think that I know, I have a fairly broad view of what we do, but I'm continuously caught out by people asking questions about projects that I know nothing about, mm -hmm. that the living office is doing that somebody else is working on. Yeah. I think that's one that we need to work on, is to make sure that people who are selling know enough about well, you know, business. This, this came out in Limerick quite a bit, and that people people began reviewing this expertise. It's not a, not it's not the qualification you get after you graduate. It's not it's not the fact that you have five years under your belt. The, the, the view this is a, a little bit like a, a piggy bank that you're continually investing in it, and that uh, you know we've done a project in this space. I must find out about that now because the next time I talk to this guy, that's yeah. the type of thing I want to mention. Yeah. So so the, in Limerick they are kind of looking at it as being a kind of a a constant investment fund as opposed to a sort of thing, but but um, but uh, yeah. So all, all 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 standard things. You know, let's and let's not be too let's not be too hard on salespeople because you know the, the difference. The reason why salespeople are the way they are is explained in in the mindset or the, the background. And the, the difference is this. difference between a transaction as in I've got to sell X amount of this this month and if I go back to my manager and I tell him I had lots of great conversations and I met these guys on the meals and you see that in there my expense account I brought them out and we got on great and I think they're really going to bring us in on the next tender and so and John's going to be listening and he's going to be tapping me and uh, yeah but uh, what have you sold? Your target was to sell X number of these a month, and you get me some. And I say, oh, hold on, John. I'm building relationships, rapport. I'm building the network. I'm getting referrals. I'm in there for the long haul. 
their monthly target. So unfortunately, the guys who are the pushy and, and want to sell you something, even if it's not what you want to buy, are doing it because generally that's the environment we brought up in. And that doesn't, that doesn't work for most industries anymore, however, because it's relationships. It's not about arriving on somebody today and then wanting to buy from us straight away. It's about being, having that communication, that contact today, keeping it going over a year and a half or two years or five years or a professional lifetime and being there when they need something. And, and kind of that relationship aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess the relationship aspects come back down to the manners, personality, honesty, <coughs> but if, if you measure people on this, then you get the last, you get the last set of slides. I think that's... I've got a question whether the TCEC has turned us from people who relationships all we ever needed to people in Ali transactions. But it's true, it has. And, and, and we, would, we would deal constantly with representatives of companies who are using materials in our, in our business. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the ones who come in here the most, and that we all work with the most, yeah. and that we would probably display the first five up there yeah. most of the time. Yeah. Um, we, would, we would trust them and there's an honesty about them and a follow through and a personality and that's what the relationships are built on. Yeah. So those guys who are salespeople yeah. do fall into those categories, I believe. It's funny probably that you say that. Um, we, we don't just sell, we have companies buying. Um, and we're involved with a financial services company which is quite a large one at the moment who are buying a sales <coughs> system for their sales people. And um, we had an encounter yesterday with the number one vendor in the world and they, tried, they were trying to force us down their sales process. I got off the phone, and with my client, they're not going to make the shortlist, yeah. right? Three that are going to make the shortlist are the people who are going to want to build a relationship. This company didn't necessarily want to come face to face with us until we had clarified that they were on the shortlist. And that wasn't the right way to handle it because it's a life and pensions organization of 60 years, and the culture is you do business with people that you have relationships with, that you trust, that can show the main expertise. They had the expertise, they had, you know, the reference sites, they weren't building the relationship. So they were transactional, they're not going to make sure. Well, you know the interesting thing about what you said, and, and, and I, I, it's interesting, again, when you, when you talk to other people about these different things, because some people make brought up that same point about, you know, but now we're in a high pressured environment, we're like that salesperson who's getting, we, and we need to find work. Um, and, and I was thinking it's a little bit like, you know, when uh, you, you see the movie Jaws and all it takes is a drop of blood in the water and the next thing the sharks are circling because they can, they can sense it. And, and desperation and, and all that pushes it. But that stuff is stuff that people can pick up from. But you know the difference for me, but, uh, somebody in Limerick explained it very well. They said, there's a guy who calls me every two and a half weeks. And he rings up and he says, oh, how's the weather, whatever else, uh, anything happening, uh, you know we're still there. And, and, so, and so, I'm getting fed up with him. Mm -hmm. I've decided I'm not going to do business with him. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's the, you know, what's the cutoff point? And he said, well, you know, if he called me every four and a half to five weeks, That'd be fine. <laughs> so the difference was yeah, yeah. <laughs> the difference was four times a year was the difference between harassing and being over pushy and not getting it and, and the other. And the other